Hey guys, it's Boonske. Welcome back to my channel. So I have some good news. I got word a couple of weeks ago from my promotion committee that my dissertation was finally approved. This means I only have my defense left to plan, but in the Dutch system, the defense is basically only ceremonial, all the hoops that you have to jump through to get a PhD. I have now jumped through, and now at this point, I can basically be assured that I have a PhD. That means that all the long hours at the office, all the moments where I doubted whether my research was even worth doing, all the writing, the rewriting, the thinking, the rethinking, all of that time and energy has finally paid off and I can close this chapter and move on to bigger and better things. And that is cause for celebration. So today I want to kind of reflect on the long 18 year journey that led me here. I started studying Japanese back in 2005 and I chose the discipline literature within Japanese studies to focus on. And so I've basically been doing that this entire time. And I wanted to commemorate the moment by reflecting on seven books or seven authors that have been instrumental in my development as a scholar and as a Japanese learner. So today I want to discuss briefly what these books or authors have meant to me. And instead of giving you like a summary in which, you know, there's always the danger of giving away the plot if you haven't read the book. I don't want to give you any spoilers. I thought it would be a nice touch today if I just read you a passage from the book. I will link to all of the books below in the description so that you can order them on Amazon and where available I will also link to Aozura Bunko because that's free and who doesn't like reading for free. So here we go. So the first author I want to discuss is somebody I don't really enjoy reading anymore and that's Murakami Haruki. I know he's very popular and people really like his books. Um, I'm less partial to him, although I do really enjoy his short stories. I don't really enjoy the longer novels. Yeah, I think his writing is overall quite gimmicky and it really annoys me sometimes. But I do want to mention him today because his books were kind of my first moment of contact with Japanese native materials. I still remember after my first year at uni where I majored in Japanese, I read one of Murakami's books, Kokkyo no Minami Taiyo no Nishi. I used the summer to wrestle my way through about, I think, 70 to 100 pages of that book. I was never able to finish and I felt in the beginning that I wasted my summer because Sometimes I really didn't even understand what it said, even though I looked up all the words. This is something early intermediate learners struggle with a lot, I think. But I remember also after that summer, then in my second year, all the issues that I had in my first year kind of had resolved themselves purely because I had wrestled and struggled through Murakami's novels. So I do owe him something in that respect. And so I think he deserves a mention in the list today. And I will read to you now from this very famous collection of short stories, The Elephant Vanishes. I will link to it below so that you can also buy it. I'm reading from a short story that is entitled no aru asa ni 100% no onna no ko ni deya o koto nitsuite. So yeah, very brief. Shigatsu no aru hareta asa, harajuku no ura dori de boku wa 100% no onna no ko to sure chigaru.正直言ってそれほど綺麗な女の子ではない。目立つところがあるわけでもない。素敵な服を着てるわけでもない。髪の後ろの方には彼女の姿を身にした瞬間から僕の胸はじなりのように震え口の中は砂漠みたいにカラカラに乾いてしまう。The uh, next author I want to mention has been a huge influence on my thinking about literature, thinking about Japanese literature, and my entire journey as a scholar and that is Natsume Soseki. I always enjoy reading it from this specific so-called Shinshoban of his collected works. This is not easy to get, but it's also not impossible to get. If you go to a website called Nihon no Furuhonya or Kosho, you can find used books. 
And in some of the cases, the booksellers have international shipping as well. So it's really worth checking out this site. I'll make sure that I link to it in the description below. So if you search there for Soseki Zenshu Shinshoban, you will get this. And this very beautiful cover is designed by Soseki himself, actually, when he um, collaborated with the now famous publishing house Iwana Michoten. But back in the day when Soseki joined, Iwana Michoten was not famous at all. Basically, you could even say that Iwana Michoten today exists because Soseki was able to invest in the company. So Soseki is not only a great writer, but he's also a very influential literary and historical figure. Both my undergrad and first MA degree were both on Natsume Soseki. Actually, my second MA degree was also about Natsume Soseki. Actually, my third MA degree was also about Natsume Soseki, now that I come to think of it. So Soseki, very important for me. So I did research on various novels of his, starting with Meion and then Samakura. But today I want to read for you a few lines from arguably his most famous novel, Kokoro. Watakushi wa sono hito o tsune ni sensei to yonde ita. Dakara koko demo tada sensei to kaku dake de honmyo wa uchi akenai. Kore wa seken o habakaru enryo to yu yori mo. Sono hou ga watakushi ni totte shizen dakara de aru. Watakushi wa sono hito no kiyoko o yobi okosu goto ni sugu sensei to yita ku naru. Fude o totte mo kokoro mochi wa onaji koto de aru. The next author I should mention is Tanizaki Junichiro. Tanizaki is a fantastic writer. I mean, Soseki is a great writer, but Tanizaki has a way with words that feels almost magical. His descriptions of objects and people and fabrics and clothes are so, so detailed. And sometimes when books are very descriptive, it can get quite boring or a bit dry. But Tanizaki's descriptions are so vivid that you can almost feel the fabric that he's describing, that you can almost touch the object that he's talking about. And that's such a huge accomplishment. He is still today one of my favorite authors. And I think one of my favorite novels must be Chijin no Ai. And I reread this now and again. The book is rife with all of these detailed descriptions that I just mentioned, but it's also just a really fun read. It's kind of juicy, gossipy, there's drama, intrigue. So now I want to read the opening lines from this novel for you. Hope you enjoy. I am going to read the opening lines from this novel for you. Hope you enjoy. I am going to read the opening lines from this novel きっと so the next author I want to mention is Abe Kobo. Abe Kobo was an artist in the true sense of the word. He was not just a novelist, but was involved with all kinds of media production. And I really enjoy his fiction writing, but also his non-fiction writing. He was a very good essay writer. And I find myself going back to his essays on a regular basis because he was a postmodern thinker who really thought through the underlying issues of his time, not in kind of an intellectual, aloof, looking on from a distance kind of way, but more in a practical, almost activist way. He really wanted to observe the issues of his time and think through them as a member of the society that he lived in. And this permeates both his essays, his nonfiction writing, as well as his novels. And surely one of his most famous novels Tsunano Onna happens to be one of my favorite novels as well. I remember reading this in the summer between my undergrad and my graduate degree. This is a kind of almost Kafkaesque story of a man that gets trapped in a sandpit. Even though in the beginning he feels like he has to escape, the villagers don't let him. And the woman with whom he is forced to live also doesn't let him escape. And so his world becomes smaller and smaller. This kind of postmodern observation of how human life is kind of 
bureaucratized and inscribed in law and documents and stuff like that. This is really palpable at the beginning of this novel, so I'll read the first few lines for you now. 8月のある日、男が一人行方不明になった。休暇を利用して、汽車で半日ばかりの海岸に出かけたきり、消息を絶ってしまったのだ。捜索願いも、新聞広告もすべて無駄に終わった。無論、人間の失踪はそれほど珍しいことではない。統計の上でも、年間数百件からの失踪届が出されているという。しかも、発見される率は意外に少ないのだ。殺人や事故であれば、はっきりとした証拠が残ってくれるし、誘拐のような場合でも、関係者には一応その動機が明示されるものである。しかし、そのどちらにも属さないとなると、失踪はひどく手がかりのつかみにくいものになってしまうのだ。So the next author I want to mention is Edo Gawa Rampo.、Um, I still remember entering grad school in Japan. And there was one class that was completely about mystery novels. Starting in the Meiji period, when Japanese authors started to translate foreign detective novels and mystery novels, and then all the way to the present moment. And during one of these classes, I got introduced to Edo g a w a r a m p o I'd heard of him, of course, he's very famous, but、uh, at that time, I'd never seriously read anything by him. And I was so enamored by his writing. It's kind of mysterious, but also funny and a bit weird. And there's almost a kind of science fiction y feel to it as well. And I think one of my biggest takeaways from Japanese grad school, apart from the very serious studying that I was doing, was the joy of reading detective novels in Japanese. Yoshiko wa, mae yasa, otto no tocho o mi okutte s h i m a u t o so re wa i t s m o juji o sugiru no daga. Yatto jibun no karada ni natte, yokan no ho no, otto to kyo yo no shosai e to jiko mori no ga re ni natte ita. そこで彼女は今、経済誌のこの夏の増大号に載せるための長い創作に取り掛かっているのだった。美しい慶州作家としての彼女は、この頃では外務省書記官である福君の影を薄く思わせるほども有名になっていた。彼女のところへは毎日のように、道の崇拝者たちからの手紙が幾通となく送られてきた。The next author I want to mention is Mishima Yukio. Mishima is, of course, very famous for his very complex writing, lofty language, difficult words, long sentences. You really see this in his more famous novels. Now, Mishima's writing, both his fiction and his non fiction, by the way, is usually themed around either eroticism or ultra nationalist thinking, or sometimes a combination of those two things. And so sometimes it can be a lot. However, to my surprise, Mishima also wrote a bunch of so called entertainment novels that are really enjoyable but really, really incredibly well written. And one of those novels is Inoti Urimas. The discovery of his entertainment novels really made me see a different side of Mishima that I didn't previously know about. And for some reason, this side of him usually goes overlooked because It's not as sensational, of course, as his other writings, but I think this section of his writing really appeals to me the most. I know that this novel has recently been translated into English, so I'll link to that translation below as well. So if you are interested, you can put them side by side or just read the English translation or buy this、uh, from Amazon. Unfortunately, it's not available on Aozora Bunko yet. I'll read for you the first few lines from this book. Hanyo wa meo sama shite, mawari ga hido ka akarui no de, tengo ku ni iru no ka to omotta. Shikashi koutou bu ni kitsui zutsu ga no kotte iru. Tengo ku de zutsu ga suru wake ba aru mai. まず見えたのはすりガラスの大きな窓だった。何も飾りのない窓で、あたりがむやみに白っぽい。気がついたようですよ、と誰かが言った。The last author I want to mention today is Tawada Yoko. Tawada Yoko is a fantastic writer that I discovered a few years back, but has quickly become one of my favorite authors. And one of the most important themes in her writing is language. And language happens to be the thing that really drew me to studying Japanese. So, Tawada Yoko is Japanese and she writes in Japanese, but she lives in Germany and she's also fluent in German, but she's also fluent in English. And she kind of incorporates all of these languages in her writing, her fiction writing, but also her poetry. And by incorporating all of these languages in her writing and by playing with words, 
she challenges the idea of a stable national language. We tend to think of national borders, national languages as these stable entities that to an extent also structure our own identities as human beings and as individuals that live within a country or a nation state. However, I think Tawada Yoko's writing really encourages us to think beyond the rigid borders of national language, national identity. And so today I want to read the opening passages of the first volume of Tabata Yoko's latest trilogy that was recently completed. So if you want to read it in its entirety, I'll link to all three volumes in the description below. Um, but here's the opening passage of volume one. Boku wa sono hi, hiruma kara sofa ni yoko ni natte kushon o daite, oto o chisaku shite telebi o mite ita. Ame no oto ga kokoro o nagomase te kureru. 特に僕の家の前は石畳の歩道の向こうが小さな公園になっているので、雨の石に当たる爽快な音と土に吸われる柔らかい音がちょうどいい具合に混ざり合って、いつまで耳を傾けていても飽きない。so that's it. These were seven authors that were instrumental in my development as both a scholar and a Japanese language learner. Please let me know in the comments below which Japanese authors or books you really enjoy reading. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.